Alright, welcome back. So in this video, I want to share with you four soft skills that you'll need in order to be successful. So I know at first this channel is geared towards like environmental engineers, but what I'm about to tell you is really geared towards every single job. So it's very broad. This is just a few skills that I learned to pick up as an environmental engineer, but I know that this can be used throughout the entire field, no matter what field you go into. Alright, so the first skill that you need is good communication. So let me first bring up the point that I used to be an introvert. Well, I still technically consider myself an introvert, but back during like high school and college, I really kept to myself. I didn't really like to speak with anyone unless I really needed to. So even with like friends or teachers or professors, classmates, I didn't see the whole need to talk to them unless I had to get something out of them. And then once I got this job as an environmental engineer, that was when I was forced to break out of my shell. So you still need to be good at communicating and speaking with people no matter what field you are into. So for example, right when I first started this job, yes, I spoke well with my managers and my coworkers, but I didn't really want to speak with other people within different departments. I was given my own office desk and everything, but I was scared and hesitant and embarrassed to pick up the phone. I was scared to talk with people through the phone and you know, I struggled with this, but then I was forced to learn. Even though you think that engineers are just nerdy people would be always secluded, that's not the case. You have to learn how to speak clearly because throughout your entire job, your profession, you're going to be speaking with other people, like other leaders, other bosses, other managers, managers who aren't even in the same field as you. So you're going to be speaking with like business managers, civil engineers, and other non-STEM related members. So maybe even the general public, you're training people, you don't really know what their background is, and not everyone is coming from the same engineering background as you. So not everyone has the same lingo as you. Not everyone understands the same terminology as you. So you just have to be able to speak clearly and present it in a way where everyone can understand. If it's too confusing, then people won't listen to you. And that's the case for the real world. And this skill you pick up on the way. So you're not going to learn right away the same day. Maybe you're extroverted, so you have like already uh, an advantage to other people who are introverted. But for the most part, you will change professionally. You'll know what to say, when to say it, and who to say it to. But you learn all this through experience. And I'm just saying that I picked this up on the job. So you don't have to have this skill right away. It would just be good if you have it already. Now the next skill that you need is to have some sort of critical analysis skills. So I know you're done with school. You finally graduated college. You would think that you don't need to have any like super hard critical analysis skills anymore. But that's completely false. You still need to be on your feet, on your toes. You still need to be a quick learner and adapt really fast to the environment. So all throughout your job, no matter whether it's environmental engineering or any other field, you will always run into problems. And those problems could be like technical or like personable. So you might have like a difficult coworker that you're dealing with, or it can be like more towards a project. And both of these problems you have to resolve quickly and professionally. Now the third skill is that you need ambition. So. It shouldn't just be like little children who are ambitious and always curious and always asking why and why and sort of being annoying. If you pursued and graduated engineering, you should have had like a curious mind to begin with. So starting off as a child, building Legos, that was probably where your curiosity and your innovation and ingenuity came from. So if you're going to pursue like an engineering degree or field, you need to still have this with you. You need to carry this with you for the rest of your life. You should always have like a scientific mindset and always be willing to learn because things are always changing and you have to adapt to changes all the time no matter what you have to be willing to learn willing to accept change willing to fail and for the most part just be open-minded so for example this skill can add on top of another skill just imagine having a difficult coworker. so if you're open-minded then you're not going to be so mean towards that coworker who is having a difficult time with you at least you're willing to learn and accept and see where he's coming from that way you understand his difficulties. And lastly, I, I probably wouldn't even say this is a skill, but it's something that you need. It is passion. So this sort of upsets me when I see like a coworker who's an environmental engineer not living up to his title. So for the most part, you can't lie your way to this job. I'm gonna tell you right now, if you're doing this for the money, if you're trying to pursue environmental engineering for the money, you're in the wrong field. You have to love what you do and you have to like love the environment and have a future goal for what you want to pursue. You have to have a foreseeable future that you want to achieve. You should be putting your money where your mouth is. So for example, if you love the environment, then you pretty much practically swore an oath if you joined this field and you should be doing some sustainable practices at home. So that means you're like practicing sustainability and incorporating that into your personal life. It's not just like a way of life 
at work, but then you have a whole separate life at home. You're doing this because you love it and you're truly passionate about saving the environment or doing whatever you are passionate about. So for example, if you're an environmental engineer and you're like specializing in air quality, that should mean that you are trying your best to limit the amount of air pollution into your personal life. So that means maybe for example, you're not driving like a super heavy gas guzzling car. Maybe you're taking a train, maybe, maybe you're biking. You're not trying to pollute the world anymore because that's what you do. You analyze the whole pollution process for your job. So why are you trying to be part of that problem into your daily life? When you spend like half the day at your work trying to solve this problem, why are you doing this at home? I know that they realize that that's the problem. I know that they realize that they are part of the problem, but they're not doing anything to stop that. So honestly, that pisses me off. Your actions into your daily life should reflect who you truly are, and if your true title is an environmental engineer, then you should be incorporating this into your daily life. And that's why I'm saying you shouldn't be doing this for the money because you're not going to get much out of it. So your passion that you have should be the sole reason why you become an environmental engineer. And it should reflect your personal life. Your daily lifestyle should reflect what it means to become an environmental engineer. So I know I gave more like environmental engineering related examples, but again, this is really broad enough that it can apply to every single field. So I hope that this video helped you guys out. I know this is like sort of common sense. These skills are things that you would think that everyone should have going into a job. But I should still like point it out because some people, they don't really notice the obvious. If you have any suggestions that you want me to cover, then go ahead and leave a comment and I'll try to see what I can do with that. And with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.